So I guess there's no introduction. I just uh, I just start off. Uh, first of all, you know, uh, for this victory, I, I gotta thank God, man. You know, um, you know, uh, after after I landed my first left hook, you know, I, I, I broke my left hand again. You know, um, and I had to fight another tough nine rounds with a, with a, with a, a very very tough competitor. And you know, um, I just want to pat myself on the back for that. <laughs> but you know, um, Adrian Granados, like I said, you know, he's a world class fighter. I knew he was gonna come to fight, um, and I did what I had to do to get my victory. You know, uh, I know everybody would be like, man, you could have, you could have, you could have boxed more and used your jab. But when, when I hurt my, when I hurt my hand, I couldn't jab. I couldn't jab like I wanted to. So every time I landed a flush jab, I had to wait another 45 seconds. So, so that's why I was fighting on the inside, you know, and, you know, I had to do what I had to do to get my victory. Um, you know, until I see the fight, then I can say, oh, I give myself a A or a B or a C. But, you know, um, overall, I give myself an E for effort, you know, because uh, I really bust my ass today. And um, I, I had to dig down the wire and, and make it work and, and get, the, get the victory at home. Um, uh, I really ain't got nothing bad to say about nobody. You know, um, like I said, you know, moving on. I just want to be more positive and, 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 and be a better father, you know, and, and see smiles on my kids and my nieces and nephews' faces. And before this fight, my son said, can you just promise us a win tonight? You know, uh, my job is done, you know, uh, and I just want to thank everybody for coming. And we got more to come in 2017. Now, any questions? I'm, I'm here to take questions. Hey, B, congratulations, man. Do you feel you ever hurt him in a fight? And do you feel if it would have went 12 rounds, you would have got him out? I hurt him for sure. I hurt him plenty of times. But I'm going to be honest, he hurt me one time. He hurt me one time. And, um, you know, I'm very good at, 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 at keeping it as, as a disguise. Just like a lot of people ain't know that I hurt my hand in the first round. But, you know, um, I did what I had to do. And, you know, uh, he stayed tough and I stuck to my game plan. You know, I had to make my adjustments and it was a hell of a fight. So you comfortable at 147 though? Most definitely, most definitely. You know, um, I know I, like, I know I heard him. I was hurting him, I can hear him. I can hear him oozing, oo oohing and ah, and then when I hit him with body shots on the inside. That's, you know, what, that's what he said about you. <laughs> you know, uh, and you know uh, I'm not gonna lie, he hit me with some good shots, and, and, and you know, but but this boxing, you know, uh, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not somebody that's gonna say, oh he didn't hit me or you know I didn't get hit with a good shot because the mother the motherfucker can fight, and I knew that I knew that coming in the door, and, and I knew you know I had to be on top of my game or I will be another Amir Amon, you know, and I'm not throwing no shade at Amir Amon, but you know um, it just it is what it is, but. When it comes to Adrian Bronner, I just see myself, you know, in this spot that I that I'm in right now. You know, I, I just feel like Fetty Wap, cause I don't see eye to eye with nobody. Um, the decision. Uh, I I gotta take the better with the sweep. You know, <laughs> I, I've seen I, I've seen worse. You know, I've seen worse. You know, um, like I said, I, until I go home and, and and critique the fight myself and see it for myself, you know, um, all I can say is thanks to the man upstairs that I got this victory. And I'm done fishing right now. <laughs> We're going to come back to the league later. Because right now, I, this is how I look at the fight. I said, Coach Mike, let's go let's go fishing. I got a, I got a big fishing rod, you know. I put the bait on the hook. I threw it and I caught his ass. Now that's another fish in the bucket. Let's move on to the next one. Adrian, does promoting multiple events and at the same time being a fighter affect the way you train in any way? Um, most definitely not. You know, it's act it actually helps me because, you know, I have to, it, it, it makes me want to be more excited. It makes me want to put on better shows. And, and, and that only brings a better outcome 
for me, you know, you know, uh, the man that been by my side the whole time, <laughs> Andrew Williams, you know, uh, I don't know what he keep putting in his hair for to make it look like this, but <laughs> it never changes, <laughs> and over the years it just get better, but, <laughs> but you know, um, about billions will be one of the top promotion um, in, the, in the sport of boxing, and you know uh, a lot of a lot of people they they like to be negative. Right now, I'm trying to put all the negative to the outside and, and just the most positive energy in my circle as possible. That's why I stay with guys like Coach Mike. You know, you know when I'm at my lowest moments, when I was at my lowest moments, you know, taking my first loss, then my second loss, everybody like. Well, he should switch trainers. It's the trainer. It's not the fucking trainer. I got a hell of a trainer. I got a hell of a trainer. It's not the trainer. Because at the end of the day, your trainer can tell you this. He can do... He helps. Your trainer helps. But after that bell ring, man, you're lonely. It's, it's you. And, and and I understand that. And, and this man been with me through, through my whole career. And I just want to say thanks to Coach Mike, too. The next question is for us. For Mike, actually, uh, as a trainer, can you assess Adrian's performance tonight? Uh, I thought uh, it was, you know, it was a tough fight. We knew it was a tough fight. That's why we brought in the sparring party that we did. The pressure, pressure, every, every, every round, the pressure, and we knew we would probably be fighting going to this. You know, we knew Adrian. He takes a lot of shots. You know? And, uh, you know, he fought with his heart. He fought for the city, for Chicago. Hey, yeah. he had a lot of people come out to him. You know what I'm saying? He, 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 a lot of people like him. A lot of people like him. So he fought to the crowd. So with that, I give him, you know, he's been out for 10 months, you know, and what he went through for these 10 months. Right. And and everything I would give him, you know, every day. You know, just, just because. Goddamn, where my plus at? <laughs> you know, I'm giving because of separate reason. You know, we, we train multiple ways for the last six weeks. And so each each way that we had to adjust, he did it. I seen it and he adjusted to it. So with, with that, you know, with me and him coordinating different moves, different combinations, different fighting inside because we can't fight inside, you know. We're not going to back up for no one. Everybody else wants to say, oh, use the jab, use the jab. But the jab, like you said, he hurt his hand. You know, I didn't know, you know. But I figured he he, he seen something. His daddy said, he sees something, like He sees something. So I kind of figured something he was he was putting together, and he wanted to keep keep the fight uh, you know, inside. You know, and it, it was a brutal, brutal, brutal fight, you know. But, uh, you know, he got hurt for his one punch early. But then he adjusted like a you know, so that punch there was just as good as Madonna's punch, you know. But he came right back, came right back. That was a hell of a fight, hell of a fight. That's all. Who do you want next? Uh, you know, uh, right now, you know, I'm gonna be honest. You know, it, it really don't matter. My, my. Everybody know. Everybody know my quote, man. Anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans. You know. No disrespect to nobody out there or race, but I did just fuck up a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, uh, anybody can get it. At 147, you know, it's it's all it's all wars out there right now. You know, everybody. Everybody is uh, afraid of Donald Trump. Shit, they should be afraid of this 147 weight class, man. We, this is the real war, you know. And you know, um, we got some big fights coming up. Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, <laughs> and you know, I, of course, I'll take that one. You know, uh, it's, it's whatever makes the best sense for me. You know. So right now, we go. So right now, um, I've had a hell of a training camp. You know. It's time to cash checks and have some sex. And on Monday, it's back to hitting bags and kicking ass. Adrian, how bad is the hand? Do you have to go get it looked at, or? Um. Um. How bad is the hand? Um. You ever seen Scream? 
That's strong hand. <laughs> nah, but uh, I mean, I, I, I went through this energy, um, injury before, and you know, it, it's going to take a little time before um, I become confident enough to throw a full left hook again. But, you know, with my mind, mind state, you know, I'll be back in the gym in no time. You said anybody can get it. You got a lot of friends at 147, too. I just fought my friend. You're right. I just fought my friend, and I'm going to take him out tonight, and we're going to have a hell of a nice time, and that goes for anybody else. You know, uh, right now, you know, I'm an OG of the game. I'm almost 10 years in. This is the second half of my career. It's about boxing, about business. So right now, my main focus is to get out of boxing. How, how, how will these little babies right here have the best life after they daddy is done with boxing? You know, um, I gotta, I, I, they're the future. I can't be, I can't, I can't be going in the ring like, oh, shit, when I get to the ring, wait, after this fight, I'm, I'm gonna get, a, I'm gonna get another uh, Maybach. I'm gonna get the new Maybach. I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get the new number. Nah, it's, it's about, it's about them. Man. It's about them, man. and and that's where I'm at, putting people in better position and, and just staying positive and, and making this thing happen. Having said that, would that make Manny Pacquiao the top priority since he's probably the biggest fight out there for you? What's up, Bob? We just got off the phone not too long ago. A lot of people don't know, but you know, <laughs> everybody thought I was stupid, but you know, I'm one of the smartest 27 year olds I heard. Now they talking right, okay? Mm. That's why I left them. Now they talking right. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they had to come back and stumble on their words, you know. So, um, like I told them, as long as the numbers are right, numbers right, we're going to have a hell of a fight. You were talking about, you know, eventually getting out of the game and providing better life for your kids. How motivating was it? You saw a bunny draw, it was like 9,000 last week. You know, you got like a nice home base here in Ohio. Mm -hmm. You know, doing that in an area where there's never been a world title fight before. Um, it's great, man. You know, uh, you know, uh, who Robert Easton Jr., what can I say? <laughs> When you know you got no disrespect to no promotional company out there, but you you really got you got promotional companies who get these guys when they already made. They get these guys when they already made a statement in boxing. You know, I I took I took Bunny from nothing, from a Facebook message, but I knew him from the amateurs. You know, he looked up to me from the from Silver Gloves and. I brought him with me, and, and to see him every fight, every fight, every fight, just progressing, and and we in every camp together, every camp, every camp, and I'm just teaching him, and and he just learning from me, and I'm just paving the way for him, and then he's a world champion, and then after last week, he 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 sell out Toledo, and he's an icon, you know, uh, it's just a, it's a surreal moment for me, and sky is the limit for Adrian Broner and about Bay's promotions, and. Like, I think we're going to be the biggest promotional company out here. Guys, we're going to do two more questions. And Akilah from One TV. Um, from, from where? One TV. One? TV. Okay. So, so the jab the key to your victory tonight? I really couldn't throw my jab, baby, but but I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Harry. I ain't going to call it better. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I really couldn't. I really couldn't. Um capitalize off my jab after I hurt my hand, you know, so so my main goal was to stay close and, and to keep sneaking as many body shots as I can because he was he was using a lot of energy. He was using a lot of energy and I, and I was just catching, hold, I would hold him and, and I would catch him with body shots. Boom, boom, solid shots. You know, that a lot of people ain't see. And then, and then, and then we was working on a lot of inside game, just in case this happened. So I start working the inside, working the inside because I couldn't use my jab, you know. So then when my hand stopped hurting, I throw the jab at the land. Boom, the land flush, it hurt again. Wow. So, so I got a tie up. Same thing, you know. Um, and then, you know, uh, I'm, I'm gonna let a secret out. You know, before I came over here, I was talking to Floyd. And he called me, and he was like, uh, cause he didn't come today. You know, his his his, uh, his his plane had a had a complication. You know, it, it, and it would have been bad if he were in the air. You know, so God bless that he he stayed where he at. But you know, um, 
and he was just like, "Hey, B, you know, this guy, he wants to get his shots off, so, so get yours off and wrap up." And then he was like, um, "We was just talking, we was just talking, you know, we was talking about the game plan." And then he was like, "Uh, and you know what, man? Well, he he say to everybody, he say he don't watch Friday, but I know he watch me, just like I watch him." And um, he was like, "You know what, man? You got a hell of an uppercut. You need to use that motherfucker more." And today, you know, it, it, he just put something in mind, and and, and fighting today, you know. Uh, it worked, so you know. Um, I want to thank them too. Thank you. Adrian, you mentioned wanting to take your career more seriously and setting an example. Can you um, point to any specific habits or things that you feel need to change? Um, I've, ch I've changed a lot, <laughs> um, personally, and you know, uh, spiritually. You know, just just every way. You know, <laughs> it's a it's a you know. God blessed me when I was when I was so young. I, I I've done a lot in the sport at a young age. I was able to do so much in this sport, and I was blessed with a, a, a substantial amount of money at a young age. So you know, I was just out here just like like, like one of them in a big candy store and everything free. <laughs> you know, so you know it's when Floyd told me this a long time ago when we had some of our personal talks, he was like, um, you gonna fuck up a lot. You're young. And I was like, what you talking about? I'm thinking I'm doing everything right because, you know, I'm young and I can do it. He was like, man, A.B., just listen. You gonna fuck up a lot, but when you got the talent like you got, when you blessed like you and me, we gonna get it back. But it's about what you do with it when you get it back. And, you know, um, after a while, you know, after these humbling situations I've just been in, and then, you know, having the worst year of my career these last 10 months, you know, um, it was like, it's just time for a change. You know, I'm sorry, it's time for daddy, but hey! <laughs> daddy, talk. Okay. What? Okay. So, yeah, I'm a real father. Okay, so. <laughs> So, you know, um, it, just, it was just time for change. And, you know, um, like I said, man, you know, uh, I, used, I used to wake up in the morning. This is how I used to wake up. This is how my morning used to go. I used to wake up in the morning. Let's say we had, we're in L.A. I don't know what we're there for. we just in L.A. It's about 18 of us. I don't know why 18 people was with me. I don't know why we got all these rooms. All these rooms. I don't know why. This, this, this is. So we wake up. Boom. We going to a day party. So we go to a day party. I don't know why we going to spend fifteen to twenty five thousand. I don't know why, but that's what we doing. Then after the day party, we go change outfits. That's another ten to fifteen thousand with eighteen people, and then we go to a night party and spend another ten to fifteen thousand. And then after that, we go to an after party after the after party. And it's just like, why am I doing this? I don't know, but it's fun. And Andrew sometimes would be like, because we have these talks. I got a lot of mentors, but we had these talks. And he, he used to always be like, listen, man, this is his voice. Listen, man. He'd laugh in my face. Listen, man. If he got on glasses, he'd take off his glasses. You gonna fuck up before you get some real money. <laughs> and, and then I'm like, shit, I, I already got seven figures. What you talking about? He's like, man, that ain't shit. <laughs> that ain't shit to what you can get. What you can be really getting. You ain't even got no money yet. You going you know what? I know what it is. And I'm like, what is it? You know, I'm, I'm young. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to. I ain't trying to listen to nobody. It's just going to. And he like, you scared. You scared to be successful. You scared. They done gave Floyd all that damn money and you don't want none of that shit. <laughs> and then, like, it didn't really kick in until I was at the lowest moment of my life, like, in these last 10 months. And I'm like, damn, was I scared? <laughs> let's, let's go get this money. And that's what we on right now. Yes. Okay, thank you, everyone.